that setting. Okay, we should now be recording. Um, so there are a few things uh, that I wanted to go over again before we have any questions. Um, so let's let's jump to Web Campus here, and and I'm going to open up the the other window. Sorry, the chat window and the other windows I need, and oh, it disappears when I go to sharing. Okay, um, so uh, the first the first change that you'll notice is I added a a uh, a, a new module onto Web Campus called uh, Digital Lectures and Notes. I think that this is a little bit better in terms of organization so that you can uh, click on the appropriate page here instead of having to look in the, in the later modules. So that is the first thing that I wanted to mention. And I think I might be removing the, those pages from, from the modules below since these modules are meant for uh, being the um, the chapter modules and not necessarily the um, the week modules. So that's the first change. Uh, second thing that I wanted to look at is the tentative schedule. So let's let's open that up real quick and see where we're at. And again, I have to I have to move these windows around so that I can see what's going on. <laughs> uh, there are windows here that that uh, you won't see and won't be recorded there. All right. Um, so if we scroll down, today is February eleventh. Uh, and so notice on, on the schedule here, we are supposed to be on section 3C, but we will be starting 3A today, which is uh, what we were scheduled for for February 9th. So we are about a, a one lecture behind. So I think what I want to do is just move everything forward by one day. So we'll have section 3C uh, on February 23rd. And then uh, February 25th, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's one week, one week too far. Um, we'll have section 3C, the lecture on 3C on February 16th, as well as our group um, group work. So we're going to meet for, uh, so today we should be able to finish 3A. Next class, we will do 3C, which is a very short lecture. It's a very, a very short section compared with the amount of work that uh, uh, the amount of material that we cover, and the rest of the time will be for group work, and then we'll have our review on uh, February 18th and exam one on February 23rd. Um, and again, that's that's since we're a little bit behind, we're one one day behind in lecture, which again that's that's fine. Uh, we can adjust that. This that's why this is the tentative schedule and not the uh, concrete schedule. So uh, I did want to mention that. Um, one more thing, you should. Uh, see a new tab here under the um, navigation column uh, called people. If you click on this and then click on groups, uh, these are the groups that uh, was randomly created uh, by Web Campus for the group projects, for the first group project. Um, most have three, I think a few have four, and those that had requested to work on their own um, are here at the end with their in their own uh, private group. Um, so you can click on that and it should show you uh, the group members. And if you are in that group, there should also be another button here about where this lock icon is that will take you to a, a group page where you can coordinate um, uh, meetings and things with your with your group if you have to meet outside of class. Uh, but again, we, we will we will meet for a little bit. Uh, for our group's next class. Um, I don't think we'll have enough time to finish the entire group project. Uh, so you'll probably have to meet outside of class for that, but uh, we will be meeting next class for that. So, but I did I did create the groups. And so that is where you can find those. Um, so those were the changes that I made um, on web campus and a couple of the other things. I will also send out an email and um, an email notification about the change in day for the for the exam and the review, so that um, so that everyone is on the same page, even if you missed the first part of class or uh, just need a reminder for that. Um, so that those those uh, things I wanted to mention, um, and I believe that is all of the notes that I had. So, are there any any questions from you guys? Uh, on any of the material or uh, any of the, the homework, anything that we've talked about previously. 
Oh, the due date for the group project. That's a good question. Uh, let me go back to the to the schedule. <laughs> Good, good, uh, good point there. Um, so here we're, we're moving the exam to be uh, February 23rd. And so the group project will be due that weekend. So let me pull up my calendar. Uh, so that will be uh, Sunday, February 28th at 11.59 PM. And the exam will be on, on Canvas, yes. Yep, the exam will be on Canvas. Um, That is a good question too. Let me, uh, where did I put that? Let me pull up my list here. Um, this weekend, uh, let me make sure I'm on the, on the right week. We finished 2A and 2B, so uh, those will be due this weekend um, if you haven't already finished those. Uh, there is also a reading check in chapter two, two C that we aren't lecturing on, but I wanted you guys to read through. Um, and we should, I'm, I'm hoping if we finish three A, then that will be due this weekend as well. If not, then it will just be those, those, uh, those three sections, two A, two B and, and two C. And again, two A and two B are the reading checks and the homework. Um, and then two C is just a reading check since, since we're not, uh, 2, 2C is more of an information uh, section. It's, it's a difficult one to really uh, test on. So we won't have an exam on that material, we won't have a lecture on that material, um, but it is useful to know. So I do want students to read through that uh, just, you know, again, for, for your personal information. Um, so there's a reading check on that. Uh, so we will, we will see um, where we get with that. And, and uh, also, also, uh, mini project two will be due this weekend as well, since um, there'll be, I think we have just a little bit, I think we have uh, one or two more examples left in section 2B, but then we'll be done. Uh, so that's chapter two. And so the uh, mini project for chapter two will be due this weekend. We'll start chapter three, but we won't finish it, I don't think, uh, today. So that will be due probably next weekend. Um, so the mini, mini project, um, mini project quiz for chapter two um, will be due this weekend as well. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Oh yes, thank you. Uh, attendance, um, if you're here, please type here in the chat. Uh, for the attendance. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> I, I should have that down by now. I'm not used to doing attendance um, uh, in the chat. So uh, thank you for the reminder. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's the wrong section. OK, um, if there are no other questions, then we'll go ahead and jump into the material. Uh, so again, we have a little bit a little bit left in uh, 2B, I believe. We had uh, one or two examples left. Uh, yes, so, so last time we finished with the 5K race example, if we were running a five kilometer race, uh, but the track you're running on is only measured in miles, how many miles do you run? That's, that's, the, that's the one we ended on. And uh, that ended up being 3.11 miles. So let's, then go to our. It looks like we have one one last example left um, for that. So let's let's go to the proper screen there. And mm -hmm. and let me adjust for that again. I have to move this so that it's out of the way of the windows that aren't showing up on your end. So I apologize for that. It looks like there's a lot of room here that I'm not using, but it is is being used for the chat and some other things. So, okay, so let's look at our uh, last example then for this, for this section. So this is going to be our last example for 2B. And uh, this is an example of something that, oh, um, no, I, I have not yet, I apologize. Um, 
I <laughs> I went and I, I got the uh, second dose of the vaccine um, two days ago and yesterday it it was pretty rough. Uh, I was feeling some side effects from that. So I, <clears throat> I'm a little bit behind on that, but I, I'm hoping to have that finished by either today or at the latest by tomorrow. So um, I apologize that the, that is not posted yet, the, the T30. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, today is 10 times better than, <laughs> than yesterday. Uh, but that, that kind of, uh, kind of threw my schedule off because it put me a week behind, not a week behind, a day behind in, in everything that I had, that I'd meant to do for class. Um, but uh, I will be getting that. So, okay. Um, yeah, it was just a, it was just a, a 24 hour thing um, or a one day thing. It was, it didn't last, last long. Uh, but let's let's get into the material. So let's look at this last example. Uh, so this last example is something that you might see um, in a physics or engineering class. Um, generally, in in physics and engineering, uh, we use the metric system um, as opposed to the U.S. system. So a lot of times, we'll we'll end up with is if we're doing a practical application problem. Let's say we're driving in a in a vehicle going 21 miles per hour. Uh, if we want to do some problem. Uh, in terms of physics or engineering with this, generally we'll want to convert this into the metric system. So uh, we want to convert this into uh, meters per second. So that is that is this last example. So that's, that's what we want to do here. Um, so we want to convert the 21 miles per hour into meters per second. So notice there are two conversions that need to be done here. We need to convert the miles into meters. And we need to convert the hours into seconds. Now, converting the hours to seconds should be um, pretty straightforward for you guys, since I'm sure that I, I could probably, well, let's go ahead and ask this. You, you probably already know um, what I'm going to ask. But how do we convert hours into seconds? And you can either say in the audio or in the chat. Could we uh, first convert hours uh, to minutes and then minutes to seconds? Good, yes. Uh, and so how many uh, minutes are in an hour? 60. And then how many seconds in a minute? 60. Yep. Exactly right. Yep. So that is our conversion factors there. Um, so the conversion factors here, we have uh, 60 minutes. Oh, that's all right. Uh, 60 minutes per one hour. And we have 60 seconds per one minute. So those are our uh, two conversion factors we need for the second conversion. Uh, for the first one, again, we would use that, that table, either that table or it would be given to us. Um, so we are uh, given that there is, let me see, where did I have that written down? Uh, 1.6093 kilometers per one mile. And uh, that was table uh, 2.4 on page 93 that we saw converting back and forth between the uh, metric system and the US system. Uh, and that was also the conversion factor we used in the last example as well. Um, but that is where you can find it in the textbook. So that's uh, table uh, two, I think it was 2.4, uh, 2.4 on page uh, 93. So um, again, on the exam, uh, the, uh, the sentence given 1.6093 kilometers per one mile will either be in the question itself, convert this given that, um, you know, the following, or the table will be uh, on, well, I guess uh, not on the back of the exam, will be 
displayed on web campus at the beginning. Um, so depending on on uh, how fancy I want to get or how much information I want to give you there, I think I might just give you the, the conversion factor and the problem. OK, so let's go ahead and convert this. So we have 21 miles per one hour. Let's just write it as a fraction. And we want to convert it. Now we have our conversion factors. Let's first convert the miles into kilometers. And we also notice we also want this to be in meters. So we'll have to convert that a second time. Uh, but we can do that. So um, here we want the, just as a reminder, the miles on the bottom. So that will cancel and kilometers on the top. And then our conversion factor, the 1.6093 is with kilometers and the one is with miles. So we put those in appropriately. Okay, so here now the miles cancel. And uh, what is our conversion factor, if you guys are familiar, uh, converting from kilometers into meters? One thousand. One thousand. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that one is more commonly used, so you might remember that. If not, um, again, that will be provided in in the problem. And so um, maybe we should write that here somewhere. I'll, we'll write that at the end. Uh, so we want kilometers on the bottom, so that will cancel, and meters on the top, and that's uh, ten cubed kilometers or 1,000 kilometers. All right. And so in that case, then the kilometers will cancel and we'll, we'll be left with meters. All right. Uh, nope, that is incorrect. Sorry, let me fix that. That is, is that the eraser? It is. Maybe. No. OK, let me, let's, I'm just going to have to undo this. Apologies for that. All right, let's, let's write the right thing. Kilometers is correct. We do want kilometers on the bottom and meters on the top. But it's uh, 10 cubed meters, 1,000 meters per one kilometer. That's better. All right. And the kilometers will cancel. OK. Now, at this point, are we finished? with our conversions. Yeah, we're done converting, but we still have to multiply. I have one with a yes. Well, I would say no, because we, uh, we have the hours to seconds. But if it were me, I would do that first part first, get the, the distance first for the hour, and then convert the hour. Otherwise, it gets kind of confusing, doesn't it? Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, you could do it either way. So that, that way would be perfectly fine, but that is a good point. Um, so here we do have to be careful. <clears throat> we want to look at what our current, uh, units are. We have meters per hour. And if we go up to the top, what we're looking for is meters per second. So we still have to convert the, the time units, the hours. So let's do that next. Um, so we are, we are finished in terms of the distance, but not in terms of the time. So we do have to convert that next. Um, so let's go ahead and write that in. So we have hours here on the, on the bottom. So to get the hours to cancel, do we want the hours on the top or on the bottom? On top. On top. So we have hours here and minutes here. And we know that there are 60 minutes per one hour. So then the hours will cancel and we, again, multiply by the seconds. So we want the minutes on top, so that will cancel seconds on bottom. And there's six, uh, 60 seconds per one minute. And then uh, that will cancel. OK. So let's uh, simplify what we have. So we have our numbers. We have 21 uh, times the 1.6093 times 1,000 on the top, times 1 times 1. So that will 
cancel on the bottom for a number 60 times 60, that's uh, 3,600. And the units we're left with, so this canceled, this canceled, here we have meters, this canceled, here we have seconds. So that will be meters per second. That is the units that we wanted. And so now we plug this into our calculator. Uh, now, as a note, you could do this one step at a time. You could first convert either the, the time uh, units or the distance units and then convert the other one. So do it in two steps. Or you can do it in a single step like, like we did here in this, in this example. Uh, you should get the same thing as long as you, um, as long as you don't round <laughs> or as long as you, you write down enough uh, decimal places. So I would say at least six decimal places uh, in order to avoid round off error because that does, does occur sometimes. Um, so let's go ahead and type this into our calculator. 21 times 1.6093 times 1,000 divided by the 3,600. And we get nine point, let's round to two decimal places, 9.39 meters per second. Okay. So if we were going, let's scroll back up to the top, 21 miles per hour. Uh, when we convert that is 9.39 meters per second. Okay. So any questions on this example or anything up to this point? How did you get the 3600 again? Oh, that's a good question. Um, that is so uh, here. Uh, let me pick a color I don't have here. We're looking at 60 times 60. And so the six times six is 36 and we have two zeros. So that's uh, two zeros on the end. Or you could just do 60 times 60 in your calculator and get the 3,600. So instead of writing the 60 times 60 on the bottom, I'm just writing the, what, the, what the result is when you, when you multiply that. Um, any other questions? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that is chapter two. So chapter two, um, again, we introduced units. We looked at um, what is a unit? What are conversion factors? So how do we convert back and forth between different units of say distance? Um, in the second section, we looked at uh, a, new a new system called the metric system, which is used mostly in yeah, everywhere else besides the US. Uh, and looked at converting not only within the metric system, but also between the metric system and the US system. Uh, I see hand, yes, question. I was going to say, are you gonna go over, um, is the next like um, lesson about the mini project two with the converting to like um, per servings and stuff? Um, that is actually a good question. We can, let's, let's go over that really quickly, how we would do that, that, that is a good question. Um, so let's, before we get into chapter three, let me pull up a, a fresh page here. Whoops. Why is that? There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, and let's go to uh, web campus. And let me see if I can pull up that mini project three, if that is going to show up or mini project two, sorry, not three. Uh, so with mini project three, notice we are converting um, recipes. Uh, so here, uh, you're given you're given uh, the ingredients for the recipe. Uh, in this case, you want two cups of flour, two tablespoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and so on. And you're told that this makes six servings. So the first thing that you want to note is how many servings a uh, batch of the recipe makes. So let's go to our digital paper and write that down. So uh, we note, uh, so this is for the uh, mini project quiz two. We note for, and this one is, I guess, question one. Uh, we note that one batch 
of the recipe makes six servings. Okay, uh, let's go back. And we want to know uh, how much of each ingredient do we need to make 15 servings. So let's go back to here. We want, uh, we want 15 servings. And so notice um, this isn't going to turn out to be exactly uh, a multiple of the recipe. Uh, if we were doing two batches of the recipe, that would be 12 servings. If we're doing three, uh, that would be 18. We want somewhere in between there. So uh, we're going to do, uh, let's use B for batch. However many batches we want times the six to give us uh, 15 servings because this is one batch makes six servings. So if this was one, then we'd get six, but we want 15. So if we divide by six, uh, this tells us how many batches of the recipe we want, 15 sixths. Uh, let's keep that as a fraction, but we can use our calculator to simplify that, which I'm going to um, be posting in that document. Uh, hopefully today at the latest by tomorrow, uh, two and one half or if we write that as a single fraction, uh, five halves. All right, so um, what this tells us is we want uh, five, and a, uh, five halves or two and a half batches of the recipe in order to make the 15 servings. So what you're going to do with that is for each one of these, you're going to multiply, in this case for the cups of flour, you'd multiply two by the uh, five halves or by the two and a half to get how many cups of flour you should uh, you should use you should need. Uh, so I would use whoop, sorry um, I would use this one or use it as a decimal. I suppose you could use it as a decimal. So if we did that, five halves be two point five. And so then um, when they when it says um, round the decimal to two places, does that mean the hundredth? Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. So two digits after the decimal. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So that is question one. Question two is going to be similar to that, but instead, um, you want you're you're restricted by the amount of milk. So here we have three fo three fourths cups of milk, and we have one and a half cups of milk. And so what you're going to say is, well, uh, one and a half, that's, um, well, you would do, you would do the, the same thing here. So for question two, you'd say, all right, I have uh, the recipe has one and one half cup of milk, of milk which is um, three halves or 1.5. And what we need uh, or what we have, we have three fourths cups of milk. So you're going to do the um, three halves times however many batches you have to get the three fourths. Uh, and my program is not catching up, sorry, three fourths. Or you could do that as, as decimals, it might work out better. So you'd have 1.5 times the batch equals 0 0.75, divide by the 1.5, and that's gonna tell you how many batches in total you can make with that, with that much milk. Uh, but I'll leave that for you. Um, let's go back to the mini project. So that's question two. Uh, question three, again, is, is very similar to the previous question. So you should be able to do that. And then question four is a, is a um, question four and five are, are uh, free answers. So uh, not dealing with the recipes there. So um, that is what you're doing for, for the uh, mini project quiz. All right, um, any other questions? before we 
then jump into chapter three. Okay. Um, and I, I do realize you might still be typing, so I'll keep my eye on chat, but I don't see any questions. So we'll continue on. So chapter three, uh, we're looking at uh, numbers in the real world is what the authors called call this this section. Uh, so let me let me let's use the text tool. So chapter three, the authors called this numbers in the real world. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on um, percents or percentages. So um, there is a there is some more material in this section besides just percentages, but that's mostly what we're what we're uh, be focusing on. And so we're going to uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Uh, so we're going to have a lecture on two sections, 3A and 3C. Uh, and let me pull up my homework page here. I don't believe, yeah, there's no other reading checks for this one. So um, for this one, for chapter one and two, there was an extra section, but for chapter three, there's no extra extra section for you guys to read. Uh, so it's just going to be what we, what we cover in lecture. All right. Uh, so we're going to start off with 3A. Oh, sorry. Yes, I see a hand. Question or comment? Yes, I was going to ask, are percents and percentage the same thing? Like it's one singular and one plural? Yes, that's correct. Um, okay. I guess that that is correct. Percent is singular, percentages is plural. I, so I actually should not say percents, but I do because I can't English, but I can math. Um, <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, but that is that is how it's supposed to be. Yeah, percent is singular, percentage uh, is plural, or percentages is plural. Um, yeah, apologies for that. All right, uh, let's continue on then. Um, so 3A, this section we're going to, uh, this is, uh, the authors call this uses and abuses of percentages. So here we're going to define what is a percent, look at some examples, and then we're going to look at um, applications of percentages and some uh, percented, uh, percent problems. I don't think that's the correct phrase. We're going to look at problems dealing with percentages. I think that's more of an accurate way to say that. Um, so let's, again, we'll, we'll first define what exactly do we mean by a percent. We'll look at some quick examples. Uh, and then we'll look at what are the main applications we'll be using, what are the uh, main applications in this section we'll be using percentage, uh, percentages for. So uh, percent comes from the phrase per cent. So probably recognize the per and the cent there. Um, that's often used as a prefix, meaning 100. So think of century, that's 100 years, cent 100. Uh, so meaning per 100. So an example of this, let's, let me go back to the writing tool here. So an example for this would be if we uh, have 5% and that's going to be our symbol for percent means 5 per 100. Or again, notice we have that word per, uh, that means we can write this as a fraction, 5 out of 100. So if we're talking about, uh, take for example, the workforce, 5%, 5 out of 100 workers think this or said this, that would be 5% of the workforce. Um, so that is, that is what we mean by uh, percent. That's what the actual word comes from. Um, next is we can convert uh, between percents and, oops, let's use that one, percents and decimals. So we can uh, write a percent as a decimal and we can write a decimal as a percent. Uh, and this is going to be very important. Um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, that's good. Yeah, there, there is, there is uh, some things here that probably you haven't haven't seen before, but most of this, I'm sure, is is a repeat of what you've seen in previous courses. Um, going back, sorry. Um, percents converting back and forth. So um, when we are looking at using percents in an equation or in a formula, we will want to use the percents in their decimal form. So often one of the uh, steps, one of the first steps will be converting the percent to a decimal. And so we can use it in our equation. Um, otherwise we won't get the correct solution. So uh, let's look at 15%, how we could write this as a, as a decimal. Well, just from the definition, we can write this as 15 out of 100. And if you plug that into your calculator, it will give you the 0 0.15 as, a, as what that is. Um, the easier way, the easier workaround for that, if you notice, um, with the 15%, when we converted that into its decimal form, uh, notice what did we do with the decimal? Well, we moved it to the left two places. So that is how we can convert a percent to a decimal. And so I call this uh, percent form. And I call this decimal form. So again, whenever we're dealing with percents in an equation or a formula, one of the first steps that we're going to have to use is to convert the percent into its decimal form before we use it in the, in, in the uh, formula itself. So let's look at another quick example. So this one, um, what would 27% be as a decimal? And go ahead and write your solutions in the chat and then we'll do it as a class. And let the, uh, well, well, let's do that first one first. 27%, what is that as a decimal? Is 0 0.27, that is correct. Okay, what about uh, 3%? What would that be as a decimal? 0 0.03, good. Again, we're moving the decimal place to the left two places. So we're going to have that uh, zero there, that 0 0.03. Excellent. So that is how we convert the percent into a decimal. Now we can also go the other way. So let's convert uh, 0 0.17 into a percent. Well, so when we're, when we're converting a percent into a decimal, we move the decimal place to the left to uh, two places. So to convert the other way, we move it to the right two places. And I see the, I see the answer in the chat, very good. So this would be 17%, excellent. And um, just as a note, we can have uh, a percent that is bigger than 100. Um, so something like 1.23, what would this be? Uh, what would this decimal be as a percent? No, this would be 123%. Good, I'm also saying that in the chat. Um, so percents can, can be over 100%. Um, I guess that also depends on the context of the problem. Uh, but we will see uh, most of the examples that we're looking at, um, the, the percent can be over 100%. Okay, so that is the um, introduction to a percent. What is a percent and how do we convert the uh, uh, percent into its decimal form and the decimal form into its percent form. So that is, that is the first little bit that we need. Now um, let's look at what are the what are the main applications that we'll be using these for. So uh, there are three main uses in this section for percentages, and we'll look at each one of these uh, individually. So first is to express something as uh, something as a fraction of the whole. And so an example of that would be something like seeing the phrase 2% uh, of the workforce and then some other, you know, 2% of the workforce something. 
so in that case, we're looking at 2% as a fraction of the workforce. How many, you know, of the workforce is that? How many individuals? Uh, second application is to describe a change in a quantity. Uh, so an example of this would be like uh, changes in stock market. So you would see the phrase stocks fell 15% last week or from last month or whatever the, you know, depending on the context. So uh, there's that one. And then it's the third application is to compare two quantities. And so uh, something that you might see uh, an example like this would be uh, this battery lasts, oops, battery lasts 125% uh, longer than its competitor, something like that. So um, those are the three applications that we're going to be using our percents for in this section. So we're going to be uh, expressing something as a fraction of the whole to describe a change in a quantity or to compare two quantities. And so that is going to be our, uh, our applications, our three applications for percentages, again, in the in this section. So let's look at, uh, at each one, look at a, an example for each one. Um, to express something as a fraction of the whole, I believe um, I did mention this in a previous lecture, but let's formalize it here. We're looking at some percent, P percent of a whole, then what we do is we take the P percent, take the percent times the whole to get the uh, fraction. And again, we have to be careful whenever we're dealing with percentages. We're always going to want to use the decimal form whenever this is in a formula, in an equation. So we want to use the decimal form for the percent. So that is how, uh, that is when we take the percent of, of a number to get that fraction, we take the decimal form of that percent times the number to get that, that fraction. So let's look at uh, an application of this, an example of this using, oops, using this equation. Uh, so we have an opinion poll found that 82% of workers of one of 1,255 factory workers were satisfied with working conditions. How many factory workers in total were satisfied? Okay. So here is an example uh, where we're looking at something as a, as a, a percent as a fraction of the whole. Uh, a survey was conducted, uh, an opinion poll was conducted in this factory. Uh, there are a total of 1,255 factory workers, were, uh, people that work at this factory. And the results say that 82% of them are satisfied with working conditions. Well, we'd like to, to have a um, concrete number sometimes uh, to figure out how exactly we, we would... Uh, uh, sorry, I see a question in the chat. Divide the one... Th uh, not quite, no. Uh, that's not quite what we want to do. Um, there will be, I'm going to uh, mention of when we would divide that, but uh, we have 82% of the factory workers. And um, how, many, how many factory workers are, in, are there in total? What is the whole of the workforce at this, at this certain factory? Um, 1,255. Is 1,255, yes. And the percent is 82%. And what we're looking for then is the fraction of those. This we don't know, that we want to know. And that turned out pretty pretty bad when I wrote it, I'm sorry. 
Um, so we're going to use the equation. So we want 82%, but again, we're going to use that as, an, as, a, as a decimal form, 0 0.82 times the whole, so 1,255 is the number of workers that we have. So we take the 0.82 times the 1,255, and we, uh, when you plug this into your calculator, notice we get 1,029.1. Uh, uh, can we, so let me, let me write that down, 1,029.1. Would that be a, a, a satisfactory answer? No, because it's a decimal. Right, because it's a decimal and we're talking about people. Yeah. So, <laughs> so instead, what are we going to do? Uh, are we going to convert it back to percentages? Well, if we convert it back to percentages, we'll actually get the 82%. But I think I heard someone else say the right answer. We want to round this to the nearest whole. Down to 1,029 because it's only 0.1. Right, and so we have this many workers. We're satisfied. Very good. Okay. So, another example. Um, if if we change this example slightly, let's say that. 82% of the factory workers is 1,255. And we want to know how many uh, workers are there in total. Then what would we do? Would you divide the one, two, five, five by 80 percent? Yes, you would. So notice in this case, and I'm running out of room, I need to maybe write smaller. Um, here for the second example, we would have the 0.82 times the whole, let's use maybe X, equals the 1,255. So in that case, we would divide the number by the percent by, uh, and again, uh, hold on one second. There we go. Um, we would have the, uh, the number divided by the percent in decimal form, but divided by the 0.82 to give us the, the whole number. And I, I saw that in the, the, in the chat um, at the beginning. So, uh, so that's when you would divide is when 82% is the, is the number that you're given, is the fraction. Um, then when the 82% is this number, then you would divide that number by the 82%. But again, remember, whenever we're using percents here, you have to have the percent in decimal form. Okay. Uh, yes, I see a hand. So, um, so is the difference between the two questions, the, the first one it was of, and the second one is is? Yes. Oh, okay. um, so the 82% 80, of, we're saying that, that the whole number, the whole number of the workers is 1,255. In the second example, we're saying that 82% of the factory workers is this fraction is 1,255. So we want to know um, out, of, out of how many workers is the 82% 1,255. Um, that's a good question. Um, again, I have to uh, read the question since that doesn't show up in, in the recording. Uh, when you divide, the question is when I divide, uh, it has to be in a decimal or when I multiply. Uh, the answer for that is both. Whenever you're using this percent in, in a, whenever you're using percent in an equation, it has to be in its decimal form. So it would have to be the 0.82 in both cases. 0.82 when you're multiplying, 0.82 when you're dividing. Uh, but again, whether you're multiplying or dividing depends on the context. Um, so in this case, uh, in the first example, you're multiplying because you're given the whole number. In the second case, this is the fraction and you're looking for the whole. And so in that case, you divide by the percent, but you uh, still have to have the percent in its decimal form. 
Um, I think I see a hand in the chat. Is that a, is that a question? No, okay, all right. Still, still there from before. All right, um, so that is the first application there for our percentages. Look, or it's looking at a fraction of a whole. Um, our second application is when we're looking at the at a change in a quantity. And so, uh, when we're looking at a change in a quantity, we're actually going to have uh, two numbers that we're looking for. One of them will be a percent and one of them will not. So for the change in a quantity, we are looking uh, we can, let's, let's, try to, let's say it this way, we can find absolute change and rel relative change. And so we're going to look at both of these. So let's start with absolute change. First, we'll define these and look at the equations we'll use. Uh, then we'll look at an example where we find both the absolute change and the relative change. So absolute change describes the actual increase or decrease, which I'll, I'll mention the difference there once we have, have this written down, uh, from a reference value to a new value. So here we have, we have a reference value, we have a new value, some, some value has changed, uh, like price or temperature has changed. And so we're looking at uh, what is the actual change? Um, and I see a hand, but let me finish writing this and then we'll go to that. So the absolute change, we're going to abbreviate that is equal to the new value minus the reference value. And that is the equation we're going to use to find the absolute change. So that is absolute change. And then, oh, uh, was there a question or was has that Yeah, I, I had a question. Um so is the reference value like the original initial value? Uh yes. Okay. Yep. Um I'm not sure uh, so I'm trying to I try to stay with uh as much as possible what the what the authors use the terminology and sometimes their terminology is a little bit odd but yeah that's that's the that's the terminology they use so we'll we'll stick with what what they're using. Um, okay, absolute change. Next is relative change. So relative change is the size of the absolute change in comparison to the reference value and is a percent. So here, this is going to be a common, uh, common theme that you're going to see. Uh, whenever you see relative, that's going to mean percent. So the relative change, this is the size of the absolute change in comparison to the, the reference value. Uh, whenever you see that relative, that word relative, it's going to mean percent. So the relative change, our equation relative change is equal to the new value minus the reference value divided by the reference value and this is a percent, so what we're going to do is multiply by 100 to get this into percent form. Um, and you'll notice that the uh, numerator here, this is the absolute change. So that's what we mean by the absolute change in comparison with the reference value. Um, when you're memorizing this equation, you could use either the, uh, I, would, I would just use the whole thing, the new value minus the reference value divided by the reference value times 100. Um, so let's look at an example for this. So, so uh, when we are talking about the change in a value, we can find both of these, of these things, the absolute change and the relative change. Um, let's find both. So in this example, let's say that uh, you bought a laptop three years ago for $1,200. And today it is worth $360. Uh, 
let's find the absolute and relative change in the value. So here, uh, something has changed over time. In this case, the value of the laptop has changed. And we want to know, uh, first, what is the absolute change? And second, what is the relative change? So we need to, um, let's scroll back up so these, these equations are in view. Uh, when we are using these two equations, when we're looking for absolute change and relative change, we have to find uh, what is the new value and what is the reference value. So in this example, what is our new value? What is the new value of the laptop? $360. $360. This is our new value. And I also see that in the chat. Good. And so our reference value, what it changed from is the 1,200. So let's find both of these. So the absolute change is equal to the new value $360, and let's use units because the uh, units are going to be important, minus the uh, reference value, $1,200. And so we use our calculator, we plug that in, We're going to get negative $840 is the absolute change. Okay, now, um, I don't think I mentioned this. I said I was going to, but I didn't. Uh, when we're looking at absolute change, and this is also going to be the case for relative change, the value can be a positive or a negative. If the value is a positive, that means that the value increased. If it's a negative, the value decreased. So in this case, the cost of the laptop, the value of the laptop went down. So our absolute change should be a negative. In this case, the absolute change is negative $840. So it lost $840 of its value in those three years. So the negative indicates a decrease. Okay, let's find the relative change next. And again, I'm going to use units. Um, again, I wanna emphasize since we just had, had our, our section on units, I kind of wanna, wanna still use those here. So we have uh, $360, our uh, new value minus the reference value is $1,200 divided by the reference value is $1,200. And then this times 100, again, the times 100 to get us into percent form because relative change should be a percent. Uh, so this is, uh, we'll have ne negative $840 uh, and I left the dollars off, 840 divided by $1,200 and times 100. And what I wanna emphasize here is the units, the dollars will cancel. Okay, so let's, we plug that into our calculator 840, negative 840 divided by the 1200, and then times 100 to get us into percent form is negative 70%. So the relative change is negative 70%, or if we, if we were to say that in words, the laptop lost 70% of its value in these last three years. So, uh, that gives us the uh, percent change. Again, relative is going to mean percent and the absolute is the actual value in, in the units. So uh, any questions on this example? Okay. So that is uh, looking at the change in a value. So again, we have two, um, two terms that we're looking for, absolute change and relative change. And again, whenever you see the word relative, you should think percent. So the absolute change will be the same units. In this case, it lost $840. And the relative change will be a percent. It lost 70% of its value. All right. Uh, the next, uh, the third and final part that we have for 
percentages or application for percentages is comparing two values. So let's look at the comparison of values using percentages. So we're going to have um, two terms and these will- Excuse me, uh, I'm yes. trying to do this on my calculator, what you just did, like dividing negative 840 by 1200 and I'm not getting anything like 70. Um, mm. So that you should get uh, 0.7. I'm but not then, getting that. I'm getting one four five nine point seven eight. Some. Let me clear. Yeah. Right. Um, Maybe the negative thing gets messes it up because I, I use a minus sign for the negative because I don't know how else to put a negative in there. Oh, I see. Um, that might be throwing it off. Um, I'll try, try it without try it without positive. the negative sign. Um, if you if you don't put the negative sign in, you'll just have to remember to put that in uh, after you uh, yeah. have finished with when the calculations. When I just do 840 divided by 1200, then I get the 0 0.7. Okay, so it is the negative that's that's throwing it off. Um, yeah. So in that case, I would uh, don't use the the negative then. Uh, just remember to put the negative in uh, at the end after you have calculated it. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> oh no, that's uh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, okay, uh, so let's go back to this. There, there are going to be uh, two phrases here that are going to sound familiar. We're going to have absolute difference and relative difference when we're talking about comparing values. So let's start with absolute difference. Absolute difference is the actual difference between the compared value and the reference value. So here, uh, again, we're, we're comparing two values. And the absolute difference is the actual difference between the two values. And again, I'm going to abbreviate this. Absolute difference is equal to the compared value minus the reference value. So that is our equation for absolute difference. Now this should look familiar if we scroll back up to the top, you'll notice that our uh, absolute change was new value minus the reference value. That is almost exactly the same as what we have for absolute difference. These, so these equations are essentially the same, it's just in different contexts. Uh, so I, I like to think of them as the same. Uh, and we're thinking of the compared value as the value in the object we are comparing something to and the reference value is the value of the object we are comparing. And that almost sounds exactly the same, but we'll, we'll work that out. Um, what that means in an example. I think the example will, will help bring things together. Um, so for, for comparing two values, again, we're, we're, we're going to have a reference value, which is going to, we're gonna think of that as our base value. Um, thinking about that as what we are comparing things to. And then our compared value is the thing we're comparing to our, our base value, to our reference value. All right, so let's first write uh, the, uh, relative difference and that, that equation, then we'll look at an example here. So the relative difference is the size of the absolute difference in comparison with the uh, reference value. And you'll notice we have that word relative there. So that means that this is a percent. 
So whenever we see the word relative, again, we're going to think of that as a percent. So relative difference in this case is a percent. So our relative difference is equal to the compared value minus the reference value divided by the reference value. And this is a percent, so we're going to multiply it by 100 to get it into percent form. Okay. So now let's look at an example and we're going to um, use this example. Uh, well, let's just, let's just write it down. So we are looking at purchasing either a Dell laptop or an HP laptop. Uh, let's hold on. We need more information than that. A Dell laptop for $1,200 or an HP laptop for $1,800. And the first example, uh, let's find the absolute difference and relative difference in comparing the Dell to the HP. And so here we can, um, We can write this in words as the Dell is some amount, and this is going to be blank. And then we could write more or less than the HP. We're comparing the Dell to the HP. So um, I don't want to do that yet. There we go. OK. Uh, so if we're. If we're looking at this sentence, the Dell is some amount more or less than the HP, you can already tell me whether this is going to be more or less by just looking at their values. So should this be more less. or less? Sorry, less. yes, less. The Dell is a less amount than the HP. And we can actually find how much that is probably already know how much that is. $600. $600. So what that tells us is when we're looking at the absolute difference, we should have the uh, compared value uh, minus the reference value. That's going, that should be the 1200 minus the 1800 to give us a negative because this is less. So here, what we're using as our reference value, what we're, what we're using as our base value is the HP. This we're using as our base value or our reference value and my computer is not catching up with me. Here we go, reference value. So, and what we are comparing to the HP is the Dell. So this is our compared value. And so our absolute difference should be negative because the compared value is less than the reference value, what we're using as our reference value, our base price, the HP laptop base price is 1800. Comparing that to the Dell, or we're comparing the Dell to that, the Dell is less. So we should get a, a negative, in this case, a negative 600. 
So here, when we have these problems, we have to be a little bit more careful when we're looking at uh, comparing these two, because we have to find, again, when we're, when we're looking at these equations, we go back to our equations, we have the compared val the relative difference is the compared value minus the reference value divided by the reference value times 100. Um, we have to first find what is the reference value and what is the compared value. And that is where we have to be uh, particularly careful with these problems because that is not as easy as the previous uh, previous type of problem. So in this case, we have to figure out what is our what is our reference value? What are we using as our base price? And in this case, we're using the HP as our base price. We're comparing something to the HP, so it is so the HP is our base price. Once we find the reference value, then the other value is the compared value. It's what we are comparing to our base price. So in this case, we're comparing the Dell to the HP. The Dell is less than the HP, is less than our reference value. So we should get a negative 600. Uh, so what is the absolute difference then? Or sorry, we found the absolute difference, the relative difference. So the relative difference we would have the 1800, uh, no, no, nope, I'm skipping ahead. <laughs> we would have the 1200 minus the 1800 divided by the 1800 times 100 to get us into percent form. So we have the uh, compared value, the 1200 minus the reference value is 1800 divided by the reference value, or again, the base value, what we're using as our, as our base uh, price, 1800 times 100. And so we'll get, when we do this, a negative 33 point, let's round to one decimal place, 3%. So uh, saying this in words, we would say that the Dell, that's what we are comparing uh, is 33.3% less than the HP, where the HP is our, is our reference value, our base value. So uh, stated in, a, in another word, in, a, in words here, the Dell is 33.3% less than the HP. So that is how we would write that in words. We would, we would uh, have that uh, we're using the HP as our base price, as our reference value. And so the Dell uh, is our compared value, what we are comparing to the HP. And in this case, it is a negative percent, it is less. Um, and I see a question in the chat. Do we need parentheses when we plug in the problem? Um, if you're using your calculator, if you're doing it in one step, yes. Uh, if you're, if you just do, if you do the 1200 minus the 1800 and then equals, then you do not. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, any other, any, any questions up to this point? Okay. Um, so really quickly, um, what would be what would be the uh, absolute difference and relative difference in comparing the HP to the Dell? So uh, would it be the same or would it be different? No, it would be flipped. It would be flipped, right? Because here we're using what is our base value? What is our reference value? We're using the Dell as the uh, base. Yeah, and then as, we're the, using... as the reference, yeah, the reference as the base. Yep, yeah. and I see that in the chat too. That is correct. And so what we're using as our compared value then is the HP, is the 1800. So if I were to write out the sentence, we would say the HP is how much, well, this would be 600, more or less than the Dell. More. 
more. And I also see that in chat. Very good. More than the dough. Would the percent stay the same? I, I think it will, but it would be a positive. OK, uh, it is going to be a positive. But actually, the percent is almost never going to be the same number. It will flip from positive to negative or from negative to positive. But it will almost never be the same number. Because notice here, when we are dividing this in our, uh, if we were to do the relative difference. Oh, I see, because you're dividing by a different. We're dividing reference. by a different number. We're using a different number as our base price, as our base number. So we would have 1,800 minus the 1,200 divided by the 1,200 and times 100. And in this case, I'm going to do the, uh, you should do this on your own to make sure you get the same thing, but you will get a 50%. And so uh, let me just finish writing this out. And uh, we'll, we're a few minutes over, I apologize. Uh, but we get that the HP is 50% more than the Dell. And so again, the percent is almost never going to be the same. It, it, the percent depends on what you're using as your base value. For using the HP as a base value, that is 1,800. And so 600 is a different percent of, is a different fraction of 1,800 than it is of 1,200, which is if we use uh, the, the Dell as our, as our base price, as our reference price. Um, Okay, so we're out of time. Uh, I think there was, yeah, there's one more example here, and then we have section 3C. So uh, we will definitely be able to finish that next class and have time uh, to split into groups. Um, you can contact your groups uh, right now if you want to, but we will be using some time. It won't be the full class time, but we will be using some, some uh, class time uh, for that. Oh, yes. So 3A, I should have that due as not this week, but next week. Um, yes, yeah, so office hours today are, uh, well, let me double check and make sure that I always get that. I always flip my, my days um, from 545 to 630 today. Um, let's see. So uh, I will send out an email with, with the changes in the uh, date of the exam and the review. Uh, but I think we'll be on track. I think we're just one one day behind in lecture. Um, any last minute questions? Let me uh, go ahead and click that. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you if you uh, want to attend office hours, if you click on the um, uh, where is it? It's it's under the course introduction. You click on the uh, office hours digital page. That will have the link to the. Uh, office hours, uh, the office hours Zoom link. Um, any other questions? OK, uh, thank you very much again for attending and, and uh, for your, your patience and, and your input and participation in the class. Uh, we'll stop there for now. Um, if I don't see you in office hours, have a wonderful weekend. Um, and I will see you next class.